Good morning everyone. Welcome to our 15th session. Um, our speaker is Marie Joy Miranda and we all know her as MJ, the Senior Procurement Officer from Hado Projects. She is our registered in-house nurse. So today she will talk about first aid. So MJ. So we're here to discuss um, basic first aid. The contents would be introduction on what is first aid, first aid steps, primary, primary survey, managing hyperventilation, nose bleeding, choking, and heat exhaustion. What's in it for me or what's in it for us that we have to know first aid? First, it is to gain knowledge and confidence to deliver potentially life-saving assistance. Um, people oftentimes forget why they need this. There's a saying that it's better to know first aid and not need it than need first aid and not know it. You don't know when you will need it. Oftentimes people um, are very relaxed that they will not encounter any accident. It's better for us to be prepared than being lax and not knowing anything when that situation occurs. First aid is a help given to a sick or injured person until full medical treatment is available. This is the initial assessment or this is the initial management um, to a patient or to a casualty. For example, um, in the office setting, somebody uh, suddenly fainted. Before a medical practitioner or paramedics arrive in the area, first aider would be the initial responder. He or she will be the initial person to manage what is, hap uh, what is in the situation. Our aim is to preserve life, prevent worsening of the condition if possible, and promote immediate recovery. Primary survey. This is um, basically what you always do when you encounter some um, an accident or um, injured patients or casualties. D for danger. You, um, you have to assess the setting before you go to attend the needs of the casualty or of the patient. Always remember that um, your safety, the first aider's safety, is the priority. You cannot help or assist other individuals if you yourself is in danger. For example, you will respond or you will help with other people like, um, let's say there is a fire coming on into the building. Somebody collapsed. You have to make sure that before you help the other individual, the, the area or the surroundings will not be a hindrance for you to become a patient as well. There might be some fallen debris, so you have to be careful and watch out for it. After making sure that you are safe, you have to, um, second priority will be the patient. It will be the casualty. Second, response. As soon as you um, assess the, the situation, the area, you have to check the responsiveness of the casualty. While going, you can shout, hey, hey, are you okay? If the patient did or the casualty did not respond, go beside her, tap or shake his or her shoulder. Airway. This is very basic on all medical settings or um, because you have to make sure that there is no blocking with the airway of the patient. Like for you to, for you to assess it, in, uh, before, COVID, before COVID, in order for you to assess it, you have to um, tilt the forehead and then lift the chin with your two fingers. And you can see the inside of the mouth. Uh, you need to place your ear next to the uh, patient's mouth so that you can hear his breath or you can feel his breath. That is initial thing that we do if um, before, before COVID. <laughs> but since COVID happened, um, how were we able to assess the um, airway or the breathing of the patient 
is through the rise and fall of the chest. You can see the chest when when a person when a person breathes, there would be a rise and fall of their chest. So you will be able to assess the breathing and the airway at the same time. Circulation. If the patient is responsive, if the patient is breathing, put him or her in a recovery position, which I will show with you later. In the event that the casualty or the patient did not respond, is not breathing, doesn't have a pulse, you have to perform CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which would be a different topic, you know. Um, Here's a quick view on how a primary survey is being done. Um, one must call 999 for the ambulance in order for them to respond accordingly. So I hope um, this video was able to provide you um, on how to do a primary survey. Um, this would be the recovery position um, you have to make sure that the patient is on the left side, um, but making sure that he or she doesn't have any wound or fractures on that area because we needed uh, most of the blood flow into the vital organs of your body, especially your heart. That's why we're positioning it on the left side. Um, first, uh, first aid management would be hyperventilation. It is, I could say it is common not only inside the work area, but probably inside your house. Um, the common cause would be nervousness, anxiety, panic, and stress. The management would be be firming but reassuring with the, with the casualty. Lead the patient into a quiet place. Oftentimes, us people, um, when there's there's something wrong with an individual or there is, we tend to group ourselves there and check what is happening, which should not be the idea. Um, we have to give space to the casualty. Let um, inform the crowd to disperse, to leave, and then so that you could manage easily the casualty who is hyperventilating. Inform the casualty or the patient to hold his or her breath for five seconds because you will notice if a person is hyperventilating, he or she has rapid breathing. It would it um it is so fast for him or her to hyper, hyper uh, to to breathe, which causes this hyperventilation. So reassure her or him, inform her to do deep breathing, relax. Oftentimes, we know that whenever someone is hyperventilating or having a panic attack, they use paper bag. There are pros and cons in using this paper bag. Um, first, the paper bag entraps the, the carbon dioxide that we are excreting or exhaling, which our body needs for proper circulation, blood circulation. It is not only oxygen that we need inside our body, but also carbon dioxide. Now, this paper bag helps us to entrap the um, carbon dioxide that we are not able to inhale. All right. First, you have to take, you have to inform the casualty to use the paper bag and then Take six to 12 easy natural breaths. Inhale, hold for five seconds, exhale. And wait for another five seconds. Inhale, five seconds, exhale. Always remember that if you do not have a paper bag with you, never use a plastic. Comparing with the material of the paper bag and the plastic, um, the paper bag still has holes, which could other um, particles like oxygen could enter. However, plastic bag um, is a very is a close um, substance, which 
does not there's no circulation in, there's no air circulation that will happen inside it will only cause you suffocation and then make sure that the paper bag is being held by the casualty and not by you as a first aider all you have to do is give the paper bag to the casualty and let him her or her do the deep breathing inside wait for 10 to 15 minutes at most and then if possible let her also breathe outside the paper bag if there is no paper bag, you can use your hands. Cup it up over your over the mouth and nose of the uh, let let your casualty cover his or her mouth and nose. Managing nose bleeding. This is very common nowadays, especially um, of the extreme weather here in Doha. It could happen during winter time, it could happen during summertime. Unknowingly, sometimes people just um, nosebleed out of nowhere we don't even know the issue but most commonly um, we're having nosebleed because um, there's a foreign object that was stuck in our nose we keep on blowing very hard the, um, irritants like uh, um, prolonged exposure to bleach or detol it is harmful for your nasal septum and could cause rupture of your vessels on your cartilage, on your nose cartilage, all right? The most common management that we know when someone is nose bleeding or you yourself is nose bleeding is to lift your forehead, um, lean your forehead back, which is a big no-no because it might cause aspiration. We don't want for you to um, tilt your head backwards and then the, the blood will go inside your vocal cords and it might go inside your respiratory system. It will travel to your trachea, to your lungs. So we don't want that to happen. All we have to do when you yourself is no ble nose bleeding or when you know someone or you met a casualty who is nose bleeding, let him or her sit upright and lean forward. Okay, make sure that his head is slightly tilted forward. Pinch the nose on this area above your nostrils. Pinch it. Pinch it for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then do not let the person swallow their blood. If the bleeding is, if the blood is going out from the nose, it's fine. It's totally normal. All you have to do is wipe it out. In the event that the bleeding lasted for more than 15 minutes, immediately call a paramedic because it could be something severe. All right? Um, for us to prevent re-bleeding for the casualty, inform him or her not to pick on their nose, not to blow very hard um, for six, uh, six to 12 hours. So this is the proper position. And please, again, never tilt your head backwards. Choking. Um, common cause of choking for an adult would be swallowing of food without properly chewing it. When we are hanging out with our friends, drinking and eating, we keep on laughing, we keep on talking. This is the reason why um, we always say, do not talk when your mouth is full because you are very prone with choking if that happens. Okay? For children, small children, um, ingestion or swallowing of small objects like toys, um, sudden, or fruits like cherry tomatoes, grapes, popcorn, without you cutting or peel, um, slicing it for them in their bite sizes, um, in their bite size, it could cause choking with the kids. So we have to be very careful with that whenever you're serving food or candies or treats to your kids. The universal sign of choking is hands clutched on the throat. No one can call you for help if someone is choking because their airway is blocked. 
their pharynx is blocked, so they cannot talk. They clutch their hands on their notes and on their throats to know, for you to know that he or she is choking. Managing choking. If the person could cough forcefully, it is good. All right. If not, you have to give five back blows and five abdominal thrusts. I'll share with you the video of the five back blows and abdominal thrust. Initially, all, um, we have to, the easiest way to perform um, management on choking is by giving back blows. All you have to do is support the front of the patient and tap on the, um, tap on the shoulder blades of the patient or the casualty. Forcefully tap it so that the whatever it is um, choking him her, or her would be able to come out. After you did the back blows, we have to do the abdominal thrust or what we call Heimlich maneuver. Positioning, uh, you position yourself behind the casualty, put your fist above the navel, and then support it with another hand, and then do squeeze or abdominal thrust on it moving your fist upwards the body so that he could um, release what he was choked with. All right, so this is, the, this is how you do the back blows. Um, this is how you do, properly do the Heimlich maneuver. As a medical practitioner, I would advise for you first to initially do the back blows before doing the Heimlich maneuver. Because in the event that you are not practiced on making or doing Heimlich maneuver, one of the side effects would be um, you might able to break the ribs of your casualty. Um, for example, me giving Heimlich maneuver to Cecile. She's so, she's so thin, I'm super big, and my force, if I don't know what I'm doing, I might break her bones. All right, so you have to be careful in doing Heimlich maneuver as well. You have to apply the proper um, pressure depending on the body size of your casualty. If it is a kid, there is a different way on doing it. All right, um, in the event that you are alone, and nobody could help you, no one is around you, and you got choked yourself, you choke yourself, all right? This is how you do it. Same as Heimlich maneuver, you have to put your fist onto your right fist, onto your, ab uh, above your navel, on your abdomen, and then support it with your other hand. Find a chair or a table where you could, you could do your abdominal thrust. It will help you to, um, to give the pressure on releasing the air from your diaphragm. This is a quick video on how to do a Heimlich maneuver to yourself. Indeed, you are not helpless even if you're alone. So just a couple of tips in case that it ha these things happen with you. We don't want to wish that it will happen to you, but we have to be prepared in case the scenario or the situation occurs. One of the most common especially during this season, um, is heat exhaustion, especially for those who are working as, um, working as laborers in construction area, people who are in industrial area where the peak of the hotness and the humidity is in there. All right. Most common cause, like what I've said, working or exercising in a very hot temperature. All right. If you see someone in Salva Road running in the middle, of, running on the sidewalk, doing their exercise at twelve o'clock noon. All right, and then suddenly he collapsed. He or she collapsed. It could me. It could probably mean heat exhaustion. You will be able to see with the patient that he or she is heavily sweating. Is having muscle cramps faintness, dizziness, fatigue, headache. One of the most common um, 
signs or symptoms that the, the patient or the casualty is having heat exhaustion is that he or she feels cold, but when you touch him or her, they're hot or they're warm. All right. Um, the management that you will do is first to move out the person from the heat or from a, a very hot area. Like if he or she is outside, move him or her into a shaded area or shaded place. Lay the person down and elevate the legs and feet slightly. We need to make sure that the proper distribution of blood circulates in our body, especially in our vital organs. That's why we're trying to elevate the legs and the feet. Move tight or heavy clothing. If the patient is wearing um, vests or jacket during this season and this happened to the casualty, you have to remove or you have to reduce whatever clothing that he has. Loosen up the buttons of their pants. Loosen up the bottoms of their shirts. Have the person drink cold water. It can be cold water as long as it can be Gatorade, as long as it is not um, alcoholic and caffeinated. Cool the person by spraying or sponging with cold, or cold water or fanning. And monitor him or her carefully. With all this, um, nose bleeding, hyperventilation, choking, and heat exhaustion, in the event that the, the casualty or the patient continues to deteriorate, meaning um, what it, you did the initial management correctly, yet the bleeding did not stop. The patient became unconscious. There is a chest pain on the patient. Seizure occur or there is cyanosis. Cyanosis the bluest discoloration on your lips and tongue. A casualty's patient slips or tongue. You have to call 999. Sorry, it should be 999. Call the ambulance immediately so that the paramedics will be able to rescue you. All right. Be a hero, save lives. First aid is for everyone, everywhere. And you don't need to be a doctor to save life because um, you, as the initial responder, if you did not able to manage it accordingly, it will be difficult for the health practitioner or for the doctors and nurses to, to assist the patient. If you were able to manage it from the beginning and do the procedure properly and the patient did not deteriorate, it's a very good job. So that's it. That's it for my presentation. I have a few, um, I have a crossword puzzle for you guys. So I hope everyone will be able to answer it. And you have your choice of meal, whoever gets the answer correctly, either Jollibee or KFC. Okay. Okay, guys. I cannot hear you. All right. Where's my chat box? I, I thought uh, through chat. Seven yeah. down casualty. Wait. <laughs> Jollibee, two-piece chicken joy. <laughs> Let's answer, answer first. Um, number one, initial care or management to injury or illness. Aid. First aid. Okay, guys. Who said it? Sorry. Aid. What? First aid. Who said it? Jen. Jen. Janeline? Yes. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> okay, first aid. Um, common cause of nose bleeding. Irritation. 
Okay, thank you, Missy. English, too much English. Head tilt, chin lift, to open what? Airway. Really? <laughs> okay, no more, no more. <laughs> okay, I will go. You see, second answer for me. <laughs> Jollibee Chicken Joy. Airway. Cyanosis. Bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. Cyanosis. What? Cyanosis. Hey. <laughs> Ah, Dinge, is it really difficult? Cyanosis. <laughs> All right. Uncontrolled exhaustion may lead to. I think it's stress. Be... Stroke. It's stroke. It's stress. I don't know. It's stress. It's stroke. Actually, thank you, Jovi. And Igwa, thank you so much. Number six. After a successful first aid management. Place the casualty in what position? Resting position? Yes. Rest. Uh, no. no. Recovery. Thank you. Recovery position. Uh, Recovery. Oh. You're your friends. You're cheating. <laughs> I said casualty. Thank you, girly. I answered two. So two orders. <laughs> Two orders. Two orders nga. Dalawa chicken. Yun na yun. <laughs> hey, anxiety. Thank you, Lou. Hey, only Filipinos are... Nine. Nine epistasis. Thank you for reading. Lou's reading. Woo! So, we <laughs> Someone is consulting Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, question and answer. If you have questions, um, just so one clear uh, about the, uh, the the choking part. Is it in the diaphragm or in the stoma? How to uh, to, to, to find? The perfect, the perfect location yes. would be on top, uh, one face above your navel. Huh? One, one, one face above your navel. One face above your navel. Face. Yeah. So it like is, actually, it is in, it is within the stomach area, but you have to trust it or put the pressure upward so that it could squeeze the diaphragm. The only, uh, the only thing that you will consider putting the your face towards your diaphragm, towards the casualty's diaphragm, is when the person or the casualty is pregnant. Okay. I'm just checking because if I, uh, I myself do it in my personal, so I'll find a chair where I have to push it. You have to put your face. One. Okay. <laughs> All right, the top of the table. With your other hand, support it. And then, when you then do the abdominal thrust, you have to move upward. Move it up. Okay? Move it upward. That's how you do the Heimlich maneuver. You don't just squeeze like that. No. You have to squeeze it upward. Because we wanted the air from the diaphragm to be released so that whatever that is blocking onto your pharynx, your vocal cords, it would come out. I forgot to mention that whenever you see someone who is choking, never ever do the blind picking. Blind picking is when you put your finger inside his or her mouth to remove the object. It's a big no-no. It could actually the situation by you, I'm always like that. Uh, pharynx or trachea. So it is a big no no. Do the back blows or back slaps and then him like maneuver. 
sips of water could help. But it is an initial reaction that when someone um, choked, his breathing would be rapid. He will take a very um, fast breath so that to compensate from the lost minutes or seconds that the, there was a blockage inside his um, respiratory area. So you could help him or her after a few minutes and give sips of water. Do not give full blast water, like let him drink it right away. No. Couple of sips. There's a different way on doing um, the Heimlich maneuver or back slaps or back blows with the babies. I have a video here. One second. For the babies, especially which are two years old below, and they happened in the event that they happened, they, that they were choked, all right, place them in a football position. Hold them, hold, hold their chest onto your arm and um, slightly do the back slap, all right? That's how you do it. If the patient or if the kid is three years, two to two years old, up to and above, you have to position yourself leveling the kid. You have to kneel down to make sure that you will be in, in line with him or her and do the abdominal thrust. Like what I have said, put the pressure onto the casualty depending on his or her body size. If it is a kid, you cannot use your full force in doing the abdominal thrust or giving the back slaps. All right. How hard should the back slaps be? Um, forceful, but not to the extent that it would break, it would cause breakage or damage in the ribs or bones of the casualty. Like you will back slap it using the using your um, palm, the heel of your palm. All right, you do it in between the shoulder blades. So you have to make sure that the pressure that you are putting um, is within the, the capacity of the casualty. In the event that, for example, after um, three, three, root, um, three full back blows or and abdominal thrust you did to the patient or to the casualty, and in and still the object is inside, please immediately call nine nine nine. Everything is clear. Yeah, so far so good. I'm just checking on what is the best chair possible when you're choked by your own self and no one's gonna help you. In the office, in case nobody is there, I prefer the table. Can I, I was thinking of a doorknob. Is it good? Or, no. No, it or a washing machine? It should be something that is stable, that when you put a pressure, it will not break or it will not move. Because you wanted to put the pressure onto your abdominal towards your diaphragm area to release whatever the blockade. Okay. It will also depend on your height, right? Exactly. That's why they've mentioned if you're very tall, uh, that's why you have to get um, a stable chair or ta uh, table, a stable chair or table where you could do the abdominal thrust. If you're too tall for it, you have to hunch your back. Bend a little. Yeah, great topic. Anything else? None. Um, just if, if, if someone's coughing inside the office, what's our first aid solution? <laughs> Spray with a mask. Mask. <laughs> mask. mask. 
<laughs> wear immediately mask. <laughs> Yeah. Because mask protects you faster compared to the alcohol. <laughs> Just make sure that whenever you go out of your station and room around in the office, wear your mask. In the event that you are not, um, if you don't feel comfortable wearing mask, you can somehow remove it while, while on your station. But make sure for the expense of other people. You have to wear mask, put on your mask whenever you're roaming around inside the uh, inside office or even outside. Right, nice one, MJ. Sure, guys. There's one last question. What is it, please? Number one there, Dinch, is Panadol. Our first aid kit. Um... We need to have gauze, we need to have scissors, we need to have bandage, we need to have antiseptic swabs, all right? Um, we need to uh, have band-aids. We need to have the OTC drugs like paracetamol, um, cold spray or heat spray. We need to have gloves and we need to have mask in our um, First aid kit. Actually, during now that is COVID, we really need to have um, mouth mask, I could say, because when you do CPR before COVID, you put your mouth towards the mouth of the other person or the casualty to blow the air towards inside his body. But now you cannot do that anymore. You need to have a barrier covering yourself to put protecting yourself. Remember, um, the priority is our safety. Priority is the first aider's safety. So did I miss anything from the first aid kit? Basically, that's it. So I must say there is no need to worry. Um, all the items that you mentioned, we have it available in our first aid um, box. How can you differentiate a panic attack from something much worse? Because they have the same symptoms. How do you know if you would call the 911 or just do your usual first aid? Um, usually, how will you differentiate it if it is panic attack? Like I've mentioned, the most common um, signs that you see a person is, is having panic attack is, is if he or she has rapid breathing and is shaky. In the event that, that you provided the proper management, given that you have the, in a, the paper bag, you inform her to do slow, deep breathing, and still it deteriorates or it worsens, that is the time that you have to call the paramedic. As long as you do the proper intervention for the, unless he or she has underlying illness, like uh, on top of the uh, on top of the panic attack, there is an, another reason why he or she um, is not recovering from it. When you do their initial management. Like for example, if the patient is, uh, let's say it's schizophrenic, and he or she had heart uh, hyperventilation. You gave paper bag, you instructed to do deep breathing, it didn't help, it worsened. That is the time that you call the ambulance or the paramedics. If, if, if you did the proper management or if you did the proper first aid to the casualty and it worsened, it did not, um, he or she did not get well, then there could be an underlying cause or another reason why is she, he or she is exhibiting that symptoms. Like for example, with nose bleeding, if you did your proper management with the nose bleeding and the blood still continues to run down, then it could be that there is another reason why the blood doesn't want to stop. Did I answer your question? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else? 
I hope you learned something from today. It is very, 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 very basic. Like, um, the reason why I chose this topic is for you to relieve from the misconception that we are used to do from our grand-grand-grandma or grand-grandfathers. You know, way back in time where this um, kind of assistance is not, is not available or if it is available only for those who are health practitioners. But now, even if you are not a health practitioner, as long as you know this basic management, you will be able to help. All right? You will be the first responder, you will do the initial assessment, and you will be the first reason why the casualty will survive. Anything else? So, yeah, I think that's it. If you don't have any other question, but if you have, if you need something, you can send me email, you can send me a message in WhatsApp, you know. Private consultation. 